Protect yourself with all Good, good, gentlemen. Trunks are good on both sides. Fellas, we went over the rules in the dressing room. I want you to caution you to keep this fight clean at all times. Protect yourself at all times. And what I say, you must obey. Good luck. Touch them up. Fanless atmosphere, of course, in the COVID-19 protected bubble there at the MGM Grand Conference Center. But that doesn't mean your voice can't be heard. You can go to ESPN.HearMeCheer.com to participate with your voice as a fan for this main event live from Vegas. Dre Jose Pedraza said in terms of taking this fight, the two-week turnaround, the catch weight now higher at 144. Yeah, it can be considered a risk, but he thinks he will adapt well to the weight. Feels late here is strong, but he said, I'm faster, and you combine that with my skill and agility, and that will be the key to victory. I agree, Joe, that that should be the case. You're, you're looking at a fighter in Jose Pedraza who's fought 67 world championship rounds. Le Pierre's only fought 12. And Pedraza has a lot more experience than Le Pierre, taking nothing away from Le Pierre, but Pedraza, if he wants to keep his title shot alive and his name at the forefront of the sport, he's got to not only win tonight, but be impressive. So Tim Dre brings up the experience edge for Pedraza at the highest level, the 12 rounds that he references for Le Pierre, that is when he fought Maurice Hooker, March of 2019 for the WBC Junior Welterweight belt. And he was rocked and cut in the fifth round. He was knocked down with a left hook in the ninth round. Wide margins for the unanimous decision win for Hooker that night. Yeah, but he gains experience from that. Le Pierre, you know, and he's taking that experience that he gained in that fight into him right now. Uppercut left hand from Pedraza. I love the punch, the punch choices, the punch selection coming from Pedraza, he's coming from different angles. He's confusing LaPierre in there. And LaPierre is, is a hard guy to hit. You know, he's very he's a slick fighter. You know, he moves his head often, but there you see right there, Pierre pushes off and attacks and comes forward, trying to close the distance. And the work rate from Pedraza here in round number one. Natural right-hander who, as you see, switches constantly. Pedraza's doing the right thing. He's coming out, he's letting Le Pierre know that I'm the boss, I'm the guy with more experience, and you're a good fighter, but I'm a better fighter. And that's the kind of presence you want to have if you're Jose Pedraza in this first round. See blood coming from the nose of Le Pierre. Shoved into the ice bucket as he injured it at the end of the ninth round in his decision win against Mark Bernaldez just moments ago. He's now 17-0. Meanwhile, in that first round, Tim, Jose Pedraza landed 11 power punches against Nick Pierre. Yeah, the variation of the punches, the punch selection, that what I'm talking about. And here you see Pedraza comes around with the right hook right there inside the pocket. But then you see him weave and get his head back off the line, which confused LaPierre. And then he caught him with a couple of more combinations right there in that sequence. Great work, great offense, great creativity from Jose Pedraza. Talk about the extra weight that Pedraza has to deal with in Le Pierre, and to me, Jose Pedraza looks like the bigger man right now. Physically. He's coming for that. Come on, man. He's coming. He's coming. Oh. See, a lot of people don't understand that movement of Pedraza and what he's doing. You know, he's making himself hard to be timed. You know, it's hard for Le Pierre to time on the shot. And then when Lake here sits right there in front, what do you see? Pedraza now working combination to the head. Look at Lake here covering up, and Pedraza's just letting him fly. 
Bayless has to to keep a close eye. I know he's blocking some of those, but some of those shots are getting through. Absolutely, some of them are. Puts up the earmuffs, and Pedraza says, that's fine. I'll press the accelerator. No problem with that. And there's an uppercut that lands. The answer at all is a concern. Pedraza lands a thudding uppercut. Don't push, don't push. Pedraza's doing exactly what he's supposed to do. I said it in the beginning, taking nothing from Le Pierre, but you have to look at his record, you have to look at his experience, and you have to treat him as such. Good shot right there from Pedraza. You can't allow a person like Le Pierre, a fighter like Le Pierre, to gain confidence. If I hear that you're working a day job and going to the gym at night, I gotta treat you like, you, you know, you're, you're boxing in the evening and working during the day. Yeah, I gotta treat you just like this. And that's what Pedraza's is doing right now. Come on. Come on. now. Trying to make some way. Push off and create some offense of his own here at the end of round number two. Yeah, Pedraza might have punched himself a little bit out this round. He threw a lot of combinations. We'll update those CompuBox numbers when we come back. Active round two from Jose Pedraza. Good stuff. It was a rapid fire assault in round number two from Jose Pedraza. Talked about Pedraza setting the tone. I think I counted somewhere between 30, 35 shots to the body, to the head. I'm concerned that Lake Pierre felt like it was okay to sit on the rope and take that kind of punishment. Not every shot landed, but plenty of them did. And Kenny Bayless was, was very, very close to stopping that fight. You know, and Kenny Bayless made the comment just before the start of this third round to Mick Lake here. He's like, listen, you got to show me something at moments like that. I, it was my job to protect you. But in that second round, look at the punches for Pedraza. He was 46 of 83, 55%, 43 of 67 on power punches. That's just in the second round. Let's check in with Bernardo and hear what they're saying in the corner of Slick Mick. <laughs> right before Kenny Bayless told Nick LePierre to show him something, Joan Guzman said the same thing, and LePierre told him, look, he hurt me to the body. And he says, look, you can beat this guy, but you got to show me something. Joan Guzman is the trainer of LePierre. Of course, Guzman, former junior featherweight and junior lightweight world champion. You know, when Pedraza landed those combinations, and you didn't see anything coming back from him, from Lake Pierre. You know, referee could have stepped in there and stopped that action a long time ago. He could have stepped in there. It was probably about 35 seconds of no return fire from Lake Pierre. Here, Jose Pedraza, you want to test the tank of Le Pierre again. You had a great round. I know he probably has to get his win back under him and recover. But fighters speak loud. The body language speaks loud. And there's a reason Le Pierre wasn't throwing punches back. And he's got to go see what that reason is and go test him once again. Well, you can tell the stomach of, of Le Pierre it doesn't look like it's in tip top shape. You know, I don't see any ridges in his stomach. If I'm Pedraza, that's where I'm going. I'm going down to the body. Forget about the head, I'm going to hit the body. If you're late, Pierre, you got hit with a good body shot in the previous round. You got to try to recover and get yourself back in this fight. It's still early. Left hand that scored. He got that shot. Combination that comes in. He got hurt with that. He did. End of three, Pedraza in control. Another high percentage of power punches landed in that last round for Jose Pedraza. And Timmy, he got to Le Pierre late with the left hand. Yeah, Pedraza keeps landing shots like that. Look at how he just made the jab miss of Le Pierre and came right over the top with the straight left hand and buzzed him. You saw the stanky legs right there from Le Pierre. You know, if he continues to land shots like this in this round, this fight is going to be over real soon. Trust me. 
Talked about Pedraza at the top of the show, showing some slippage in his last couple of fights. He's not showing any slippage right now. He's showing vintage Jose Pedraza, the one that helped him win the two world titles in two different weight classes. His Achilles heel has been inconsistent. He's been inconsistent in the past. That's not the case tonight. The problem for Le Pierre is he's not only been hurt to the body now, as we just saw in that replay, he's now getting hurt to the head. You said, Dre, you know, that Pedraza has that willingness, you know, you got to understand people that you got to... You gotta go to a to a pretty much a dark place when you're in that ring. You know, you gotta you gotta feel like you're invincible. You gotta feel like you're the man. And, and if there's any time when you don't feel that way, you get into a fight, you're not gonna perform at your best. And I think that's Pedraza, and I believe that Pedraza at this moment believes that he's a great fighter. And he's fighting like it tonight. I think his stepfather and trainer, Luis Espada, as well as Pedraza, they've been around the game in the amateurs a long time. They've been in the pro game a long time. They know that they don't have a lot of chances to stay in this place where they're right in line for a title shot. So they knew they had to come in here and perform tonight. And he's been off for a long time. Lots of cancellations. The coronavirus is making the most of this performance tonight. But to me, right at this moment, it seems like Pedraza's letting Le Pierre up off the hook a little bit. You know, he's moving his head very well, but he's not making making Le Pierre pay with those shots. You make a fighter miss, you gotta try to make him pay. Hey! Oh my God! Come on! Come on! That's it. very solid night for Jose Pedraza. 31 year old, former two division world champion. Lost the lightweight unification fight to Vasily Lomachenko. Now five here against late year. A 90 to 31 connected vantage to this point for Pedraza. The dominating second round remained 43 power punches when Le Pierre covered up and absorbed punishment. Check in with Bernardo. Luis Espada told me, look, he's got to use his boxing because Le Pierre is the bigger and stronger guy in there. I want him to continue to use his range, win round by round, and he's just got to watch out for one thing, Le Pierre's left. He does have to watch out for Le Pierre's left. And you can see Le Pierre trying to set it up. You know, he went to the head with the left, but you also can turn it up the middle. And as Pedraza is moving forward, you see him drop down to the body right there. He's available. He just knocked him down. That's a knockdown score. Four. Five. So Le Pierre six, scores the knockdown. Okay. Might have been a little bit off balance, squared up, and got caught in the process. But the uppercut is available for Lake Year. It was awkward there on that exchange, but the knockdown ruled. It looked like Pedraza was off balance. If you're late, Pierre, obviously things haven't gone your way early in this fight, but this is the time. Good shot. And they reverse order as Pedraza turns the tables and scores a knockdown of his own. Seven. Eight. Okay. Gloves. So they trade knockdowns here in round five. 
Now Pedraza stalking. Oh, stop, stop, stop. Play Pierre stop tying it. up. Pedraza's got to try to get another shot in there before this bell rings. Play Pierre doing a good job with the right hand. Clearing his head. Stop, stop, stop. Nice tie up right there by the vet, Lake Pierre. Tying up again, trying to get through these last 10 seconds here of round five. Just missing with the right hand. Pierre finally had some success in this round, or did he? You see right there the right foot and the left foot of Jose Pedraza right here. Get tangled up, which is commonplace for a southpaw and an orthodox fighter. Kenny Bayless missed it, and it wasn't really a knockdown. But then you see return fire from Pedraza right there. Nice right hand on the southpaw. We always say that the right hand is the southpaw killer, and here you go. You see it here in full effect by Pedraza, causing the knockdown. So that was a great replay by our crew there showing you the first ruled knockdown of Le Pierre. Clearly his right time, foot time. was caught behind the foot of Pedraza and it had a trip to it. And then you see Pedraza come back with a big right hand. And now Kenny Bayless is being called down to I assume the replay official because it'll be at his sole discretion but our replay is now what they are looking at and that is Robert Bird who's the replay official along with the commissioner but watch the right foot against the left foot not a knockdown to me yeah. To me, okay. it looked like a knockdown because Le Pierre landed a punch when he was bagging out. And you know, I understand that the feet are in position, you know, and he probably tripped over his foot, but the punch landed. So that's, they're going to come back with the scorecard. So executive director Bob Bennett putting forth Nevada State's replay rule before the start of the round. was not a knockdown. And you hear him saying it was not a knockdown with the feet being tangled. So that you, information now goes you? to the three judges. Right, and Patricia knows. Okay. Hello. Jeff Mullen is Can somebody the help me understand? bringing around the notes. Robert Bird was the replay official there, Dre, but it's at You're the sole down. discretion Can of the referee, true. Kenny Bayless. Yeah. Please, okay, Dre. but why are they stopping the action? I haven't seen this yet, Joe. I've seen them ben, ben, ben. check in between rounds, but not can to stop it. the actual flow this of the fight. Down was a trip. No, you can do this. You okay. can do this. I read the rules. You can do this at the beginning of the round. If you can, if you feel that it might have not been a knockdown, you set the ref's discrepancy, he can actually step in and actually call for this review. You're I don't absolutely like right. This, this can change the whole flow of a fight. A I'm no, sorry, I'm going to be quiet. Okay. good to know. So you hear okay. Kenny Bayless, Dre, and Tim go to both corners. All three judges have been informed by the assistant commissioner. And then Kenny Bayless goes to each corner and says, listen, that was a trip. Lapierre is not getting credit for the knockdown there. That was a trip. And to answer your question, Timmy, you said it. At any moment, it's at the sole discretion of the referee if they want to confirm or overturn any initial call, they want to get it right. They watched our replay. They watch our program monitor very closely. They said, hey, ESPN showing you that it's a trip. We feel it's a trip. And then Robert Bird is the replay official assigned, the veteran referee Robert Bird. Bayless comes down to Bird. They watch it together. They consult. They come to a conclusion. And that's what Kenny Bayless wanted to do and he was able to overturn his original call of a knockdown, ruling it a trip. Bernardo. In the absence of Executive Director Bob Bennett, it was Jeff Mullen, the Assistant Executive Director, who explained to me that under the Nevada State Athletic Commission regulations, they can stop the action in order to make sure that it was a trip, they did see the replay, and more importantly, to make sure that they change the scorecard accordingly before proceeding. I like the replay, I just don't like the timing of it. I understand if it's a referee is checking the replay during the rest period and it bleeds over into another round, but to allow the rest period, the full minute, 
to run its course and then to stop the action. I just don't like that part. Well, listen, Pedraza had Lapierre hurt, Dre, right? And if you come to the end of fifth round, advantage Pedraza with the big right hand and then the stalking attack right to the bell against Lapierre, who tied up multiple times down the stretch of that fifth round. So it does give a break to Lapierre, even though it takes away the knockdown scored, he's able to regain his composure. I've right seen the ringside just see that salt with the, 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 the ringside referee who's in charge of the video consult with the referee that's in the ring in between rounds. I've just never seen the referee get out of the ring like that. And everybody named Bird, Bayless, they're all veterans. Great, great rest. I've just never seen that happen before. It's part of the rules, Dre. It's part of the rules. They can do that. They have the authority to do that. And I don't mind it at all because you got to get it right because, it, you know, it can change the tide of the fight, honestly. If you're on the receiving end of a doc knockdown and you felt in your heart that you didn't get knocked down, that it was a cheap shot or whatever it was, to change your mood. A reminder that once we wrap up from Vegas, it'll be Scott Van Pelt on Sports Center bringing you the full day of news, including the NBA stars returning. We'll have a report from inside the bubble. Everybody's got a bubble nowadays, guys. We were the first bubble. Everybody's got a bubble nowadays. Plus, Tony Clark on what's going on with the tension between Major League Baseball and the Players Association in day one of the PGA Rocket Mortgage Classic. That is coming up with SVP on SportsCenter once we finish up with our main event here on Top Rank Boxing. And, of course, we'll be back with you after. Hope everybody has a happy and safe 4th of July. We'll be back with you for Tuesday and Thursday of next week. Jose Zepeda will be in action. He got the best of Jose Pedraza last year. And then we will have the undefeated American heavyweight prospect, Jared Anderson, next Thursday. Bernardo, what are they saying in the corner of Lake here? Yoan Guzman, the former world champion, said he's got a second shot after this opportunity that the commission gave him to take a rest, but he's not listening to me. I told him, you, we worked on that left uppercut all camp. You've got to use your range, and he's not doing any of that. That type of break mid-fight or at the start of a, a new round is not only can not only let a fighter off the hook if one fighter has momentum, but it's all, it also causes the fighters to cool down. And that's one of the worst things for a fighter is to be warm, to have the engine revving, and then to abruptly stop the car and allow the body to idle and then have to get rewarmed up. And that's what you see right now from these fighters. They're trying to get themselves back in the ladder. You desperate, my man. Take it easy. It's like you dancing on the dance floor, and then all of a sudden somebody abruptly turns the music off for, for five minutes and then tells you, hey, start dancing just like you was before we turn the music off. It's difficult. You gotta warm up. <laughs> No, Dre, you better be catching your rhythm by yourself with no music, man, and stay loose and stay warmed up. Come on, man. Shoot, come on, man. You, I, I understand what you're saying, Dre. I understand, but, you know, one guy didn't get the rest. Both these guys got a rest. And I understand that one guy might have had an advantage, but like I said, I would rather have it, have it right and be called not a knockdown than to be called a knockdown. I'm willing to deal with that. I want you to look at the total punches as we start this eighth round. Pedraza has a 127 to 51 connect advantage. But when you look at the percentage landed, he's landing 43%. Le Pierre's only landing 16%. You know, Tess would always say about that, that percentage, especially power punches. No way the closer you get to 50, that smells a knockout. 
He's at 54% power punches. He's landed 98 of 181 Pedraza. To your point, Tim, earlier, both fighters had a rest period whether they wanted it or not. And Pedraza can't use that as an excuse to not keep his foot on the gas and keep pressing the way that he was. And LePierre, he needs to look. He needs to look at the rest period as an opportunity to try to land a big shot. Go lean this side. Because he's not winning rounds right now. No, not at all. And any time that Pedraza steps on the gas and actually let his hands go, he connects. But Johnson just needs to be more, he needs to get more consistent with his work. You know, there's too many lows in his work. Beautiful counter right. But the problem is just only one punch. You hit him with one, hit him with one piece, go ahead and hit him with two, and then three, then four. Let those hands go. Nick Pierre has ability, fellas. He just was never able to get started tonight. Jose Pedraza jumped him from the first round, and he hasn't let up since. Pajaja being very smart, just picking his shots wisely. You know, he's not rushing anything. He's taking his time. And he's allowing Le Pierre to work, and then he's trying, he's trying to counter. Titles coming up on ESPN, most likely in August. This is a top-heavy division with two stars, including number one, Jose Ramirez, sitting on top. It's not only top heavy, Joe, but it, it, it's heavy in that top 10. I don't see anything easy. I don't see any easy work in that top 10 in that 140 pound division. No, Ivan Baranchek is number seven as well. So, I mean, listen, it's a great division. It really is. And it'll be fascinating to see how things play out with Ramirez and with Josh Taylor if we can have an undisputed champion at 140 pounds. Of course, we had that with Terrence Bud Crawford before he migrated north to 147. There's a lot of talent, a lot of hidden talent in the 140 pound division. You know, Zapata's one of them. You got Mario Barrios as well. You got Arnold Barbosa as well. You know, we don't talk about often, but he's also another top 140 pounder. Le Pierre hasn't shown the skill and ability to pull away from Pedraza, but he's definitely definitely showed a lot of heart tonight. Yeah, let's open the momentum ahead, please. Right. 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 Yeah, that second round he took a lot of punishment, then he was hurt with a big left hand in the third round. He was hurt with a big right hand in the fifth round. When Pedraza came back after what was initially ruled a knockdown scored by Le Pierre, Nevada State Athletic Commission took the time to utilize replay and said it was a trip, so that was overturned. Very easy as a fighter. When you have a day job like Le Pierre does and you're getting hit with shots like that and have been from the beginning, you got hurt to the body, you're bleeding out of the eye and the nose to all of a sudden find something wrong, an elbow, a knee, my back. He didn't take that out tonight, and I respect him for that.
Pedraza has Lapier here right where he wants him, but then he backs up. You know, if he puts together a series of combinations, we stay consistent with his attack. He probably could stop him. Come on, be careful, be careful, be careful, my man. Be careful, my man. Come on, give me some, give me some deal. Usa la ropa. Gira, gira, Rondo, gira, para que no te encuentre de frente. Pedraza's returning to the form that we saw from him early in the fight. He's pressing, not allowing Lapierre to think or rest. And you see all the damage that Pedraza done on the face of Lapierre right now. Time! Remember this in the fifth round when Nick Lapierre was given credit for a knockdown, but then Kenny Bayless, after that round, said, hold on a second, I want to go down to the replay of Robert Bird, take a look, and see if I can overturn this, because he believed that there was a trip. This is exactly how it went down. So he went over, went through the ropes. They were just about to start the sixth round. Instead, he sits there with Robert Byrd. You see Joe Cortez also chiming in, as well as Jeff Mullen, the associate director of the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Kenny Bayless said, hey, I have the right to do this. These are the review procedures that we have with the Nevada State Athletic Commission. And it was overturned. He said that was a trip. That was not a knockdown. Now, Dre, the problem you had with it is that it took touch up, two touch minutes up, touch up, touch up. and ten seconds on, to do that. From the time that he said, time, hold on, guys, we're not fighting, until he came back and said it was a trip and we're re-engaged, was two minutes and ten seconds. And to you, that goes against the grain of a basic pillar and tenet of the sport, is that we fight for three minutes, you get a 60-second rest, we fight for three minutes, and you have to withstand that and endure that. Right, I, I just don't like the timing of it. Um, Kenny Bayless did a great job of, of you know, wanting to look at it again and overturning it because he, he called it a knockdown, so he corrected himself. Right hand from Pedraza. Knockdown scored here in the like tenth. Seven, eight. Okay, come to me. But it was his momentum coming forward, and I believe it was a jab hand of Pedraza. Remember the last time he covered up, he got the rapid fire assault. Let's see if Pedraza can close the show as he winds up with a body shot with the right hand. And covering up and off balance, here comes Pedraza ready to close the show. Former two division world champion, seeing if he can get rid of Lake Pierre here in the 10th round. Another big shot, Liam Bates is going to stop this. There's a right hand that snaps back the neck. Bayless is giving this a good look. He does not like the way Lapierre looks. Can he show him anything at all? Jab snaps back the head. Pedraza right there in close range. Another right hand comes in. Lapierre can't tie up. Right hand to the body. Pedraza looking for that right hand over the top. Let's see if he can find it. If he takes it downstairs, he'll be able to set it up, but you gotta, you gotta disguise it. Take it downstairs first. He heard you, Tim. There it is. And then he bang right up the top of my head. Good shot. Look at Le Pierre fighting back, though, man. Nick Le Pierre's got a lot of heart. I'm telling you, man. He does have heart. The guy who was helping on the front line of COVID-19 efforts back home in New York came out here to fight, got sent back home with a positive test to a manager, so the fight was delayed two weeks, came back out, took time out for work. He's absorbed a lot of punishment tonight, but he's going to try to take it right to the wire and go the full distance with Pedraza. After being knocked down in the fifth, knocked down here in the tenth. Stop, stop, stop. No, No, Lapierre was tough enough to go the distance, but Pedraza was far too much for him tonight. And early on, he was placing the power punches throughout. In the second round, in fact, he landed 
43 power punches, a huge offensive assault. And round number five, this was the moment that went to review as Mick Pierre scored what was initially ruled a knockdown. They said no, it was a trip. But Pedraza answered in that round with a big right hand himself. Time, time. Neutral, neutral. So Kenny Bayless went to the replay official, Robert Bird, and they would take a look. And then he would go inform the judges as well as the two corners that indeed it was a trip. There was no denying what this was as Pedraza tagged Le Pierre, put him on his back end. Le Pierre was tying up numerous times down the stretch of the fifth round just to get through it. And then what we just saw in the 10th round, Pedraza scoring with that left hand, putting Lapierre down again. In the end, he landed 129 power punches. 54% of his power punches landed. The final total looked like this, 168 out of 406. Ladies and gentlemen, here inside the MGM Grand, after 10 rounds, we go to the judges' scorecards for the official decision. Tim Cheatham has the bout 100 to 88. Dave Moretti and Patricia Morse Jarman have it 99 89. For your winner, by unanimous decision, Jose Sniper Pedraza! Dominated from start to finish, Louis Espada having lost his mom this week. You saw him point up to the sky just moments ago. Mark Riegel, your final thoughts on Jose Pedraza.